When they left their countries, it wasn't okay. They ran away from their comfort zones, familiar grounds. They ran away from safety and their daily provisions. What was basic has become no longer basic. Majority of them now live in distress and painful memories of their loved ones left behind and or dispersed by war and unfolding civil unrest. Home is no longer home. They have now acquired new status. They are refugees. These young men and women have to rely on well wishes for daily food, for their clothing and shelter. Listen to this. When we were traveling all the way from South Sudan to Kenya, uh, I, I lost our, our sister to cholera. And that's when I decided at that young age that I really wanted to study hard and become a doctor. I was brought to Kakuma as a toddler, two months old to be exact, in, uh, when uh, my parents were fleeing the conflicts in South Sudan. I came from Congo, my parents passed away. My father passed away during the genocide of 1994 when we had fled to Congo. I was among the people that were so scared that, you know, I'm labeled as a refugee. All people think of is issues, it's problems. It is beautiful to give uh, a chance for these children to dream big. You know, a child from the camp who had never thought they could step into Nairobi University, having the chance and growing in that university and getting internship aid. Uh, in the country, grow their economies too. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Did you hear that what we take for granted isn't granted anymore? Education is no longer basic. It has become a far-fetched secondary need. This is the story of many of them. At least now, I know how to handle people. I know how to handle myself when I'm around people. I know how to handle problems that I face. But before then, I was so naive, I can't even talk for myself. But today, I'm a better person. I was dreaming of actually being where I am today. And uh, I am just so grateful that I actually got to become, you know, what I am today. From that small village girl who did not even know how to wear shoes to this empowered woman that I am today. WIMCO is about providing quality education. Um, the founder, who is Wimpel, he was Hugh Wimpel Pickleton, um, founded the organization in 1977. And he did this after interacting with the first refugees who came from Ethiopia. He was teaching at the Nairobi University in the Department of Philosophy, and that's how he first met the refugees. And he discovered at that point that um, the refugees, apart from getting the support uh, for their basic needs, there was a need to provide them with quality education. The Albert Einstein German Academic Refugee Initiative Fund, commonly known as DAFI Scholarship Program, offers qualified refugee and returnee students the possibility to earn an undergraduate degree in their country of asylum or home country. The DAFI Scholarship initiative is actually a scholarship program that uh, provides scholarship opportunities to refugees to access uh, post-secondary institutions of learning, tertiary learning institutions and universities uh, in the Kenyan context largely public universities to pursue different academic courses. The program has been supporting young, deserving and academically talented refugees across the globe to undertake tertiary studies since 1992. It is funded by the Federal Republic of Germany, administered by the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, and in Kenya, implemented by Windle International Kenya, WIC. The DAFI Scholarship Program in Kenya has so far supported a total of 1,185 scholars drawn from Kenya's urban areas, Kakuma and Dadaab Refugee Complex since its induction in 2005. In 2022, UNHCR representation in Kenya in collaboration with WIC hosted the DAFI 30-year celebration. 
an occasion that commemorated 30 years of raising leaders and transforming communities. The value of education as a tool for shaping the future of young people cannot be overemphasized. Over the years, the DAFI program has offered qualified refugee and return, uh, returnee students all over the world the possibility to earn an undergraduate college degree in their home country or country of asylum. Um, I believe in Kenya alone since the start of the program in 2005, we had almost 1,200 students. Currently in Kakuma uh, refugee camp, there are 248 refugee students. So higher education offers refugees opportunity to develop skills, employment, uh, economic integration, and hope for a brighter future. UNHCR funding in 2022 allowed for award of 694 scholarships to refugees with WIC facilitating the selection process and university placements for new students. The selection is done by a panel. We don't just do that on our own. So we have a team from Windle, we have a team from UNHCR, we have a team from other education partners so that then we are selecting the best students and the most needy because it, it, the, the scholarship is not just a, a scholarship for refugees. Yeah. Yeah, it's for, you're a refugee, yes, but at the same time you need to be vulnerable. Yeah. You know, so if, if you fit that criteria and then the other uh, requirements are, are cleared, then you, you're most likely going to get selected for the DEFI scholarship. This is in line with UNHCR's strategy to achieve 15% enrollment of young refugee women and men in higher education by the year 2030, the 15 by 30 roadmap. The strategic uh, goals of the DAFI scholarship program is number one, to ensure uh, that there's promotion of self-reliance amongst the population that we're working with, because we believe with skills, acquisition of skills, uh, the scholars are able to be self-reliant. Um, number two, uh, to ensure this promotion of integration of scholars um, in the communities um, and also pending durable solutions. So whether they're here in the country in Kenya or whether they resettle to third countries or basically return back home. They are now determined to go back home when things cool down and reconstruct their countries, their villages and communities. Immediately uh, I have to go back to my country. I have to go and give back to the society. I have to go and work for my people. I have to go and help in putting in place policies that can help our country grow. I know we are very much buying, but we are the people to change everything back in our country. Their professions and careers have now become the biggest asset for this eminent change that is already underway for some of them. We also want to improve the health systems that are back at home. Just to become, uh, I, admire, I happen to admire the health systems in Kenya at some point because uh, Kenya has given me that opportunity to get to know this and this is the kind of health system that uh, is going to be dynamic as much as it's not in its highest tone at the moment it's going to be dynamic it's going to be in its highest tone at some point in life so that is what one thing i would love back at my place i want to make home a better place they are on their way to becoming and some have already become lawyers medical doctors financial analysts economists political advisors social workers and much more through our girls' education program, we target to increase the number of girls going to school and to improve their performance once there. We boost community support for educating girls, provide extra materials, improve the teacher-to-student ratio to meet national standards, and offer remedial classes to help girls catch up. When you look also at the female students, it's also an opportunity for them to stand on their own and not maybe give up on life and decide okay now if i get married early that's the solution i can move on with life so it's it provides that opportunity for them to realize what is my potential what can i do what else can i offer to this um, 
to this world. UNHCR through WIC works closely with the government of Kenya and other pivotal partners and stakeholders that include national higher education institutions to accord the scholars with the necessary support needed to excel as individuals. This has included UNHCR's participation and involvement in signing of collaborative agreements with higher institutions of learning, school monitoring, joint missions, mentoring and networking through the annual students conference among others. Once a year we bring the, all the students together uh, at a student conference. So you can imagine if in 34 different institutions, those are 34 different views of looking at things um, from, the, from the students themselves. So they appreciate Kenya also from different corners. Through the partnership we have with Windle International, which began in 2017, we have had uh, 45 students sponsored. Uh, out of these Duffy Scholars, we call them Duffy Scholars, out of the 45 Duffy Scholars, we've already graduated 32. And when they come in, I think they come in like a sponge that is ready to absorb water. And there are students who are focused, students who are dedicated, and who have a purpose in life. I would like to thank Daffy, which has offered me the scholarship, because if I think where I came from, I didn't think that I would further my education. I'm in my fourth year under Daffy scholarship, so by mid-April, I'll be done with my studies. So, and it's a courtesy of Daffy scholarship. So I really appreciate and uh, the help and also the donors. So it is really a great uh, uh, job because without them, I'll have not been where I am. This has provided an opportunity to our students from uh, distressed uh, countries to, to come back to rebuild themselves uh, through the award of the scholarships, uh, alumni, that we've had are very successful, and I, I want to mention two of them. We had a student from uh, Southern Sudan, he's called Steve Isaac Kawai. He did law here, and uh, proceeded to the Kenya School of Law uh, after graduating in 20, 2019. And he did very well at the School of Law, and uh, he was admitted to the bar at the Supreme Court of Kenya. And uh, Mr. Kawai, at the moment, He's a own lawyer in Juba, in Southern Sudan, and we really are proud of him as an alumnus. Uh, secondly, he's also a student uh, from Southern Sudan, who was here for his uh, bachelor's degree in uh, medicine and surgery, what we call the MBCHB. Uh, he graduated in 2011, and he has now entrenched himself and really supported the health uh, care system in Southern Sudan. He's quite familiar with the, the, the practice, both in, in private and, and, and public. Uh, and I would want to say, and there's many, many more going forward, uh, being placed in very strategic areas where they come from. Some are even working in Kenya. Payment of fees is always a challenge for quite a number of our students because uh, it is mandatory to pay the fees in order to be admitted. And um, in the past, we have found that some students are actually unable to join us because of a, a lack of fees. And therefore, when we have uh, partners such as Windle International um, and the donor agencies uh, agreeing to sponsor some of the students who make it to join the Kenya School of Law, we are always uh, happy um, for that to happen. This is evident from post-degree monitoring of WIC alumni from different universities who are bringing transformative change and achieving significant career milestones back in their countries of origin. So my university was a good family to me, especially the School of Nursing. So the students were very friendly. Even in fact, some of them confused me that I was a citizen. So I couldn't even feel discriminated. Uh, in areas that I was weak, they usually come and help me and they lift me up. So I really got to put myself in the environment and the environment was really very suitable uh, to help enable me, push me towards my dream. 
from highlighting impactful stories of DAFI alumni and their transformational initiatives to facilitating their participation in international networking conferences. Dialogues, UNHCR ensures that DAFI alumni are seen as role models for refugee children and young and demonstrate the impact of education on individuals, communities and societies. Uh, we know all these countries where they have come from, they are facing war on, but they will not be on the war all the time and therefore we would like to groom them to take over the leadership from their current government uh, whenever they finish their academic studies. We are not looking at the numbers, we are looking at the impact in transforming lives and the opportunities that Windle is giving these youngsters. Igadun has shaped me uh, academically and even uh, my leadership. I have undertaken a lot of uh, trainings in Igaton, uh, some of which are uh, like uh, counter-terrorism, which actually is in line with my, with my course and which I think will help me to uh, speak directly uh, about my people, about the suffering of the people of, of my place, the village I come from in Sudan. We are proud to have that uh, uh, existing partnership, existing MOU that then helps to, uh, to, 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 to train uh, these, these, these young people who go back to their, to their countries and, and, and make a difference in their uh, uh, various uh, sectors of operation. I'm a fifth year medical student at Egerton University. That is, I'm studying medicine and surgery in year five, and I'm training at uh, Nakuru PGH Hospital, teaching and referral hospital. Uh, another thing that is so clear and that I'm so grateful for is I'm a be beneficiary of Windows International Kenya and uh, a scholarship that is called Daffy International. It's uh, a scholarship that is under Windows Trust, which is also partnering with UNHCR. One thing I would say is my passion is uh, extending a hand, helping someone grow. Uh, me being the international student representative doesn't mean that I only represent the international students. I also want to be that leader that is going to bring change. And the, by, by virtue of being a leader that wants to bring change in Kenya, I will be a leader that wants to bring change in my country too. We would like to see this uh, and a larger, uh, continuing and have more students enrolling in the program so that we build uh, a large health workforce in these countries for sustainable health uh, goals in these countries. When the students uh, come here, we understand what they have gone through, and therefore for Kenyatta University is to do everything possible to make sure that um, they actually take their courses. Um, of course, they have to do everything that all the other students do, but we also know that um, uh, their background, uh, some of them need some extra help, and uh, Kenyatta University is able to do that. Windle being uh, an international uh, organization that is very supportive, uh, present to their, to their students and uh, to this particular group of people, especially the visually impaired, we realize that uh, we are also challenged as an institution to give them a place. Charles is doing quite well and, and hopefully by next year he'll graduate from the university and he's a very active student and uh, Windrill have stood by him in all aspects. Even if the scholarship cannot accommodate all, if possible, partial scholarship should be introduced just to give room for those I congratulate uh, DAFI program in support to this education and of course other partners and also the dispensers of this education as well and equal also the students uh, for being there and cooperating and uh, showing commitment.
In a world that is constantly changing, education remains a constant beacon of hope. For refugees who have been forced to flee their homes in search of safety, education can offer a path to a better future. The Albert Einstein German Academic Refugee Initiative Fund, commonly known as DAFI Scholarship Program, is changing the lives of young refugees around the world. Thankfully, I'm very happy for DAFI, and we wish them all the best as they as they, they continue taking more kids to universities uh, uh, to, to do degrees, uh, diploma, certificate. Uh, we are very much grateful. I'm grateful to uh, DAFI and the Windle International. Uh, great appreciation for my side because if it was not for you, I think I, I would not be here. I think I could be somewhere there with around six children around me, <laughs> nursing them. But because of what uh, you have done through the scholarship that you gave me, like I'm um, somebody in society, and I can say, don't do this and don't do that, and people follow because they know, uh, they know that I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'll be forever grateful for your, uh, extending the scholarship to me to make me a greater person. This is my plea to invite other international organizations or other well-wishers and other people that are ready to provide solutions that are faced by refugees. So this call is open to any other person that is able to partner with UNHCR and Windows International. There are opportunities to help people throughout the world. WIC appreciates UNHCR for their role in the success of our collaborative efforts to support refugee students with relevant learning opportunities and remains committed to UNHCR. We are grateful um, first to the government of Kenya because without their support, the refugees wouldn't be having a safe space in the refugee camps. Then we do also thank uh, the DAFI uh, supporters because it's with their funding that we are able to provide that um, scholarship to the people of concern who need it. We appreciate UNHCR um, for selecting us as they're implementing PADMA for more than a decade. And it's not only here in Kenya, but also in Somalia and Uganda and Sudan. So that means um, they have a lot of trust in the way we do things. So we are very grateful for that um, support that we have received over the years from UNHCR. To find out more, visit our website, 